Uh, you keep that up, young fella, and you'll wake the whole neighborhood. Watch out, Pop. He's liable to sink his teeth in you. Junior, apparently you've forgotten one of my most frequently quoted proverbs. Which one is that, Pop? Barking dogs seldom bite. <laughs> well, barking big dogs seldom bite. Which paves the way very nicely to my fable, entitled The Hound and the Wolf. Once there was a pasture filled with the most edible grass you ever saw. And when you have a pasture with edible grass, you usually have a flock of sheep. Unfortunately, the sheep are also edible, especially to a pack of wolves. Last today, Gus. Wednesday. That's what I thought. We have mutton now, Wednesday, do we not? Usually. Then let us have at them edible sheep. And just like that, the wicked scavengers trotted up to the flock. Although this particular flock had no shepherd to guard them, they did have a sheepdog. Mauler was his name, and for a very good reason. Cotton picking wolves. Now, this entire scene had been witnessed by another wolf who had a reputation for being the craftiest in the world. I think I will decimate yonder sheepdog and then partake of a lamb dinner. As you can see, this wolf was not the slightest bit afraid of sheepdogs. And why should he be? He never fought them tooth and claw. He used the fencing foil. On guard, eh, sheepdog. Ordinarily, that was enough to send the guardian of the flock to greener fire hydrants. But Mauler had a row of molars that didn't know the meaning of the word fear. Without his foil, the wolf was helpless. Cotton-picking wolves. Cotton-picking fencing wolves. Mauler returned to his chores, and at sundown, after he had locked up the flock, headed for home. Unknown to him, he had a shadow. No sheepdog can do what he did to me and get away with it. Inside his split-level thatched hut, Mauler sat down to a plate of bone. Hard bone at that. <coughs> hmm. I, I guess I'll have to gum my way through. So saying, he removed that formidable row of molars. Hey! They're store bought them. That was all the wolf needed to know. He would swipe the teeth and the sheep would be defenseless. Good afternoon, sir. I'd like to get your opinion on a new soft drink. What's it called? Sheepdog Cola. Actually, it was nothing more than a concentrated dose of knockout drops. Don't listen to him, baby. Go ahead and take a slug and let me know what you think. <coughs> well? Uh, well, which? How do you feel? I feel fine. You don't feel sick? No, my gums itch. How about sleep? You feel sleepy? Not the least. Hmm, must be something wrong. <laughs> Nights later, after sleeping it off in Battle Creek, Michigan, the wolf returned to the thatched hut. Quick, quick! There's a starving tiger out there with a T-bone steak, and it's so tough he can't chew it. That's so awful. Those were my words exactly. What could I do to help? Have you got any false teeth he can chew with? Just those over on the table. They'll do fine. Hey, wait a minute. You said there was a tiger out there. There are no tigers around here. Did I say tiger? I meant a three-toed sloth. No three-toed sloth is around here either. That's sleeve plural of sloth is sleep. Now, what do you have around here? Uh, just sheep, dogs, and wool. Well, one of them is out there with a tough T-bone. Then give him my brand new steak knife. Yeah. You know, you got tolerance. That's what you got. And you know something? That wolf was so overcome with the dog's generosity, he actually believed his story was true. Hold on! I'm coming! One week later, the wolf gave it another try. Christmas, sheepdog! Santa Claus. He knows me. Oh, what are you going to give me, sheepdog? Give you? You usually do the giving. Well, it's been a tough winter, kid. Well, I'd be happy to give you something, Santa. Anything in particular you would like? Yeah, false teeth. But if I give you my false teeth, I would not be able to protect the sheep. Yeah, well, that's the way Christmas is sometimes. The crafty wolf was about to grab the teeth when a noise came from the fireplace and... No! Merry Christmas! Santa Claus! A ringer. But if you are Santa, then who is... Needless to say, the wolf beat a hasty retreat. But not so hasty that he didn't take the time to swipe the teeth. Bright and early the next day, the wolf boldly approached the flock. Sheep, you and I are having lunch together. <coughs> Don't <coughs> me, sheepdog. You ain't got no teeth, so you can't bite me. I'm taking this fat little lamb. True, Mauler couldn't bite, but the fat little lamb could. <coughs> And that wolf took off, never to be seen again. Oh, I didn't know lambs had teeth like that, Pop. Well, you see, son, this particular flock was owned by a dentist. He had fitted them all with false teeth. So that's why I say barking dogs seldom bite. I got a better one. Nothing dentured, nothing gained. Nothing just... Um, how about a glass of sheepdog cola, son? Hmm?